Well then, hopefully I don't get a copyright strike for the intro, because that's a pretty interesting way to start things. Who even is that anyway? Make Believe by Joel Dorton. I don't think I've ever heard of Joel Dorton, but interesting choice. But the footage was cool, though, and it helps make this interesting time capsule that this is. This is IndyCar Series 2005, uh, the PlayStation 2 version, actually. And it's the final or the most recent IndyCar game that exists. This is... The most recent, <laughs> let me say that one more time. This is the most recent IndyCar game that exists, period. Uh, a dedicated game. There's, of course, IndyCars and a bunch of other games and Sims and things out there, but if you want 100% IndyCar, this is it. And this is the second attempt by Codemasters. They came out with a game just about a year earlier called IndyCar Series without a year on it. Uh, and then this one just a year later and never did another one again for some reason. And nobody has the, their due on since. This game didn't receive great reviews, but for myself as a diehard IndyCar fan at the time, I remember enjoying it quite a bit. Uh, and its shortcomings weren't things that I would have noticed at the time, but coming back to it, it's quite interesting. So the game itself wasn't reviewed too well, namely because the IndyCar series at this time, or up until 2005, the IRL, uh, wasn't running on road circuits or anything. So the main criticism I see out there from publications at the time are that uh, the tracks are boring overall, or there's only really two types of tracks, the ones that you can go flat out on or the ones that you have to lift. But uh, for somebody that loved IndyCar and, and loves IndyCar to this day, racing on ovals obviously is a big part of that. And I think overall for a game that's doing oval IndyCar, uh, it does a pretty good job at that. Now, one of the main criticisms and kind of something unforgivable is that this is IndyCar Series 2005. And as is common with games, uh, the year that they have on them is always the year that they were put out or the year that was coming up that they put out. It doesn't necessarily reflect the content of the game. Uh, and you might assume that the content or the cars and tracks and everything in the game are from 2004. But no, you'd be mistaken. They're actually from 2003, the same year that the first game covered as well. And a few of the cars, I believe, uh, and maybe some of the tracks have been updated slightly. But by and large, this is the same cars and tracks that were present in the normal IndyCar series game. Uh, just repurposed for 2005. There's a few other new things in modes, but that is kind of crazy that even in 2005 or 2004 when this came out, uh, they didn't have any of the newer cars or anything. I would have imagined 2004 being the year that was included. 2005 was also the season that the IndyCar series first went back to road circuits. They raced at three that season, St. Petersburg, Infineon Raceway, or Sears Point that we know it as today, and Watkins Glen. So you can imagine some that picked this up after the 2005 season got underway might have been surprised to see that there were no road circuits at all. Might have lended to that general review opinion that uh, the game was a little bit boring as far as content is concerned. But it is IndyCar, and it's fun to take a look back at uh, and see what it was all about. So the game itself covers the 2003 season. So you've got all the tracks and cars from that season. And more or less, you've got everything that you would need for it, including what's playing in the background here, the Indianapolis 500. And that's the big feature of this game. There's even a whole mode dedicated to it. Unlike the first IndyCar series, this game only came out for the Xbox, which was the primary release, and then PlayStation 2, I believe in just Europe, at least initially, although that's the version we're playing here. Unlike the original version, this game did not come out for the PC, although in a few publications it said it did, and I tried to hunt down whether or not that was true uh, and had some help from a few folks, namely Tim over at Race Sim Central, and definitely did not come out for the PC. So I don't know where that rumor got started, maybe because the first one did, uh, General publications like GameStop and such thought it thought this one might have come out as well for PC, but it was only PlayStation 2, only Xbox. Uh, it's definitely the rarer of the two games. 
So on the main screen here, we have the different modes that are included with the game overall. And there's there's really four offline modes. You do have multiplayer, which would have been fun at the time. Uh, I'm not sure if you can do split screen or not in this. It could be fun to boot, boot back up. But uh, overall, four single player modes. You've got a quick race mode. You can go out, obviously, do testing or do a race. We'll do some of those, see some of the different tracks. Uh, you do have an IndyCar series mode. So you can go out and race the full calendar, full schedule, a bunch of different options for the length of races and everything. That's really uh, what I would say the meat and potatoes of the game if you want to race all of the different tracks and try to run for a championship. Uh, you have a whole mode dedicated to the Indianapolis 500, which you might wonder why that's not just in quick race, but this Indy 500 mode would include qualifications and practices and all of that stuff. So this game itself does have an actual qualification mode for the Indy 500, which is quite cool. Uh, all the different days of qualifying, which would have been uh, a little bit longer in 2004 or 5, whatever this game simulates, than it is these days. So that's a lot of fun. And then lastly, you do have what's called the Master Class Mode. Uh, and this is a really interesting thing. We'll actually check that out too towards the end of the video, but it's kind of a challenges type mode. It's it's billed as something that will teach you how to drive the Indy cars, but you'll learn quite quickly that it's more of a challenge mode, a la the Gran Turismo licenses structure or something. And it's very challenging. So we'll see if we can complete any of those. So if I hop into quick race mode, it's where we can configure what we would race as. And you do have a driver named after yourself. So I've got myself here. And they, funny enough, give you Vitor Mira's car, the number two for John Menard. Um, so I guess you can take his place. I can't see a place where you could select, at least in this mode, a different car to drive as yourself. But you can go through and select any of the drivers. Fun to go look through them. Vitor Mira, of course. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Finished second, I felt like a hundred times. I'm sure it wasn't that many, but felt like the guy was always on the cusp of a win and never quite got there. Raced for a few teams as well. I remember him most with Panther racing uh, towards the end of his career, but I believe he raced most of the 2000s um, and did quite well, just never never brought home the victory. Uh, Tora Takagi's in here. Tony Renna, of course, uh, in the game as well. Tony Kanan. It's funny to see some of the guys that still race. You know, 2005, to me, nowadays feels like quite a long time ago, so it's interesting that there's actually a few drivers in here that still drive. Uh, it makes you realize how long they've been around because Tony Kanan at this point had nearly been driving Indy cars already 10 years. And so if we think 2005 to now, he's been in the sport for a while. But uh, love to see him in the 7-Eleven Andretti green livery. We've got Thomas Schechter driving for Ganassi this season. He bounced around quite a bit uh, fast but crashed a lot. Scott Sharp. we got Scott Dixon, a very young-looking Scott Dixon there, driving the number nine for Target Chip Ganassi. He's been in the sport what also seems like forever. I think he started in Champ Car in 2000. And so this would have been third season or so if this is covering 2003 uh, when Chip Ganassi made the switch to IndyCar. So at least that's captured in here. And I should also mention won the championship in 2003. So he was even quick back then. Sarah Fisher um, reminds me so much of the IRL in the late 90s, early 2000s with Sarah Fisher racing. Um, you know, the interesting thing, go back to Sarah for a second, is 2005 was also, I believe, Danica Patrick's first season was a huge deal. And so another one of those things, if you bought this game thinking, ah, oh, I get to see the IndyCar series, Danica Patrick race on some of the new road courses. You weren't getting any of that with this, so it could have <laughs> led to that disappointment as to what this game actually covered. Sam Hornish Jr. driving for Panther Racing. This is the car I remember him most in, even though he drove for Penske and was equally as successful with them. But I just remember him racing the Pennzoil car and uh, won a few races in 2003 as well with them. Uh, Roger Yakasawa in here. Robbie Buell, which hopefully I can see him on the track because the spotter has some of the worst pronunciation of some of the guy's names, and I believe he calls him Bull. So we'll get to hear that, hopefully. Mark Taylor included, which is interesting because I believe in 2003 he raced in Indy Lights and might might just be included to pad out the Indy 500 grid so you actually have 30, 33 cars um, itself. He did race in IndyCar in 2004 for John Menard's team, I believe for some of it, uh, but then disappeared after that. I'm not exactly sure why, but fun to have him included for Panther Racing in an alternate. Uh, I think it's the 45 there. Kenny Breck, of course, the fast Swede. This Team Ray Hall car just makes me think of his crazy accident at Texas Motor Speedway, but I believe that was in 2004, so we're a year earlier than that, but uh, 
you know, Indy 500 champion, great legend of the sport. Elio Castroneves, this is one of the more interesting things. Uh, they included the Penske cars as black and orange livery, which I don't know where they got those colors from. It's not even really the Penske truck rental colors or anything, but very much not the white and orange or red, day glow red uh, Marlboro colors, which would have been what Penske's cars were at the time. So <laughs> protecting themselves against that. But you've got Elio, of course, uh, the, the defending Indy 500 winner from this year. Uh, Greg Ray in here. We'll speed through some of these. Gilles DeFerrin, uh, I believe, finished really high up in the points. One of his final seasons, if not the final one, racing. Felipe Giofoni, uh, such classic names. Eddie Cheever, of course, racing in the Red Bull car. Uh, this was his team, I believe, or Red Bull Cheever Racing says it right there. Um, so interesting guy overall. Ed Carpenter, very young Ed Carpenter. This might have been one of his first seasons as well, uh, driving for PDM Racing, which obviously isn't around anymore. You got Dario Franchitti racing for Andretti Green. These were the days where Andretti Green was really that four car combo team with Dan Weldon, uh, Dario Franchitti, Brian Herta, Tony Kanaan, and then of course, uh, Marco Andretti came in a few years later, but Dario in here in the 27, Dan Weldon, of course, on the cover of the game as well, won the Indy 500 in 2005. Luckily, he was racing for the same team in 2003 with the pretty much the same livery, so you can kind of get away with it, uh, but confusing times indeed. Buddy Rice, uh, one of those guys I kind of forget about these days, but was pretty iconic, also racing for Red Bull Cheever Racing. Buddy Lazier with the 91 with Hemelgarn Racing. I think 2003 was his last full-time season, but of course, went on on to compete in the Indy 500 for quite a few years afterwards. We've got him in the game as well. Uh, Brian Herta in the 7, oddly enough. I feel like I remember him in the Sirius XM car, but similar to Dario Franchitti's car there. Uh, Alex Barron, Alan Sir Jr. still racing in 2003, 2004 as well with Kelly Racing. AJ Foyt the 4th included with AJ Foyt's car. Uh, and then we come around the world full circle. So interesting collection of drivers for myself, you know, being a big IndyCar fan, then it's a lot of drivers that I don't quite remember. And then I'm shocked to see some of the guys that still race today. So it's an interesting uh, collection as well. Looking at the tracks, though, I'll speed through these a little bit more, but it's all the classic tracks from the time period, all the places I kind of wish IndyCar was still going to. You've got Michigan, Kentucky Speedway, uh, Gateway, they're still racing at Chicago Land RIP Motegi. I uh, wish we could go back there, but that's such a great oval. Uh, Miami, which will be the high banked version. I believe they have that in here, even though that debuted in 2003. Uh, Phoenix, with the classic flat version, thankfully. California, the full two mile oval. Uh, great racing there. Nazareth Speedway, one mile, narrow, fast track. Indianapolis, of course, which again, this is a big deal to have Indianapolis in any game. Uh, it always felt like a big deal to me, at least. So great to have Indy and represented so well here. Probably the best track in the game design wise. Um, Texas Motor Speedway, probably the worst track design wise based off the ones I've raced so far. Uh, we have Pikes Peak, which is one forget about. I don't actually know what Pikes Peak is up to these days. So maybe that's a place if it still exists that IndyCar could go back to. Uh, we've got Richmond, which we're so close to actually going back to, but IndyCar did race there for a few years, uh, and it's a good track for them. Kansas, I always get confused with Kentucky anyway, but was a good one for IndyCar. Nashville, the track NASCAR just went back to Nashville Super Speedway, uh, Concrete Oval. Could be an interesting one for IndyCar these days. And then back around to Michigan. So variety-wise, as an IndyCar fan, that's everything I'd want to see from this time period. But I can totally understand how folks booting this up, especially in 2005, where it might have been exciting to hear those road courses were back. Uh, you'd be potentially pretty disappointed with this. So I figure we'll do a few fun races just to show off what the, the game is like overall. And why not start at Michigan, uh, the two-mile oval that I hope they go back to soon. So before we do the race, I thought I'd show off the pit options. Uh, and this is where you can go to if you try to do a testing session. And it's where you can adjust your car, which is a huge part, surprisingly, uh, of this game. So this is what you'd get if you're doing a pit stop in a longer race, changing your tires. You can adjust the front wing. That's pretty much all you can do during a race. Uh, but in a practice, you can go to the garage. And if we do that, you're brought to a full garage suite where you can adjust a lot of the stuff you'd expect to adjust in a sim. Uh, and this is 
almost necessary if you want to go fast enough to actually compete in any of the races. And uh, I actually went around and searched for guides to this game. Um, and a lot of the reviews complain about how difficult this game is overall, because if you don't come in the garage and start playing around with all your settings, it actually be way too slow on some of the tracks. But you've got everything from tire pressures and springs, dampers, ride heights, uh, all the stuff that you would uh, you know imagine uh, being able to change. And it's pretty impressive because a game like this or an arcade game, you know, I could expect wings or even like tire pressures or something. But if I jump into the damper screen, for instance, you've got a full description of what the dampers do. And then for each damper itself, you've got two settings uh, to adjust all the different bump and rebound settings. It's pretty interesting that they included all of this to the detail that they did. And uh, like I said, pretty necessary to actually play around with uh, to go fast. So you could spend a lot of time in this, especially if you like adjusting setups and all that, trying to make your car fast. And uh, because there is... I guess, limited content in the game overall. No career mode, for instance. Uh, this would actually be a place that you could spend a lot of time and sink a lot of time into. Luckily, I've already got a good setup loaded for Michigan, so we'll go ahead and do the race. All right, we got our starting grid, and of course, Scott Dixon on the pole uh, leading the way with all the cars behind him, but plays through the whole grid. During the season itself, uh, I believe Bob Jenkins will actually talk through the different tracks, which is unfortunate it's not included in the single races, but we'll give you a good understanding of where you're racing. All right, so we're on the back straight away. Started from the back of the grid. I'll see if I can pass a few cars at least and get through this thing clean. Just 10 laps, so nothing crazy. Got control of the car, so you actually get to do the rolling starts yourselves. Surprisingly easy to spin out, and I should mention that, although this is a PS2 game, I did get my wheel hooked up to it, but it's very hard to control. So it might not be my best racing moments here. We'll come around to turn four, though. Stay side by side. Come to the line, grab third gear. And away we go. Can actually adjust the weight jacker. All right, we got our spotter. He probably won't stop talking the whole race. Ooh, everybody checks up in front, dive down low. Car outside, still there. Outside. All right, got it in sixth still gear there. on the still low there. side. Still there, still there, still there, still there. Outside, outside. <laughs> I think he's still there. Outside. Still oh, there. side by side outside. here. Outside. Still there, outside. You know, that sounds a bit ridiculous, but oh, we touch the apron. Coming to the back of Dario Franchitti. It sounds a bit ridiculous with the spotter chanting that to you, but that's actually how they talk on high speed ovals like this. They'll constantly tell you who's next to you. Outside, outside. We got another one now. Dario Franchitti come to the low side. There we go. Come around Vitor Mira now. Oh, he's in the race, even though I'm driving the same car as him, so. We'll race ourselves, I guess. Who's the better Menards driver? You are four tenths of a second behind Hoyt. You take a 20 second play. Car on your right side, still there. You Ooh. are clear. You I think this is Yakasawa in front. Or that's Felipe Giafoni, actually. But overall, ooh, some smoke ahead, too. The crashes in this game itself, I'm sure we'll see one at some point. Oh, touch the apron. Luckily survived that. The crashes themselves are pretty impressive. You can lose wheels, you fly in the air. I mean, that's one of those things that unfortunately attracted a lot of people to IndyCar at the time is the spectacular crashes. So they clearly spent a lot of time on that. Oh, as it touched the apron again, put it back down to fifth gear, see if I can get better top speed out of it. I do have full damage on, so you really can't hit much of anything and uh, actually make it through the race. Here we go. Come on, low side of Foyt again. Still there. Still there. Clear. Oh, <laughs> wash up and almost take him out. You are now in 20th place. There we go. Got a good run on the cars in front again. Buddy Lazier will make the low pass on him. Car outside. Still there. Outside. Clear. So overall, the representation of Michigan here, I don't think it's too far off. Clearly, it's a bit of an arcade game. Oh, is it almost slide up? Outside. Still there. You are clear. That was your best lap so far. I do like how the spotter says, you are clear. Oh. I don't know why I keep hitting the apron into turn one. We're halfway through though. Picked up to 18, so I don't know if we'll get to the front during this. Car outside. Car drafting outside. me from behind. Outside. I don't know who it is. Outside. Outside. Still there. Outside. There we go. Finally stay Still on the there. track through the entrance of a corner. Might actually be Sarah Fisher behind me. That's the half. 
that waypoint. Oh, and she's gonna make a pass on the high side. Put it down in the fifth, see if I can actually keep the high speed up. I think you want sixth for drafting gear. Uh, I got the weight jacker all the way down. In a full race, you can also adjust your fuel mixture. There's no, I don't have fuel wear or tire wear actually set on in this since it's such a short race. So you don't actually get the adjustment for fuel mixture. But neat to see those things because those are the smaller tweaks, the weight jacker, the fuel mixtures and stuff that keep this type of racing interesting for longer races. Finally picking up on these guys in front just a little bit. You are 2.1 seconds behind the race. Oh, we got a good run. Far They're quite slow. Oh, I almost chopped Floyd off from behind. The lift a little bit. Is that you're Cheever? Oh, wash up. Car inside. Still there. Inside. Inside. Got somebody on the inside, inside. right to the wall. <laughs> inside. Clear. The steering's really hard to be precise with the way it's set up for this so you kind of sway side to side and something you really do need precise steering in but better than a controller oh no clobbered the back of the red bull there saw something go flying it was off of his car i seem to be up to speed you've taken 17 place that's one way to take the place you got foy looking at me i bet i have damage at this point outside outside gonna wash up a little bit still there Still there, still there, outside, you are clear. All right, I'm clear, but he still seems to be there. Car outside, still Come there. Come around the inside, oh no! Clear. Looks like you're out of the race. All right, so definitely my fault coming up into Foyt, but uh, those types of things happen. And overall, that wasn't as spectacular as it could have been at high speed. All right, so I figured we can go to Motegi since it's not a track that we get to see very much anymore and see all I can do here. Once again, Scott Dixon on the pole. I feel like he always starts up there in quick race mode. All right, so we get the weight jacker down. Seen it's faster if we get a high negative weight jacker. And we'll see if we can make it through the corner without spinning out in the pace lap. Oh, the throttle is what is so sensitive. It's not a digital throttle, but it feels like one almost. We'll come out of the turn. I loved how the Motegi grandstands were on the side of a hill. Ooh. Flag. Green flag. All right, save the car. No. Okay, so trying this again. See if we can get a better start, not spin the tires. It's so easy to spin out on the starts. Here we go. Finally get in a straight line and just gas it up. And if I remember right, the first corner should be a lot wider than the final one. So hopefully we can go fast through them. Ooh, Tony Renna down there. Try to get a good run on him onto the back straight away. Loved watching kart race here back in the day. The cars just look so fast on this type of oval. All right, in tighter corners for three and four. They're all racing up high. Maybe I should get into the same lane. Here we go. Got a good run. Oh, no. Your rear wing and your oil system and your electronics and your front wing has sustained damage. We can fix that damage, but we need you to pit now. <laughs> I think it's a little more than that that's broken. All right, so we'll try this again to see if I can actually complete a few laps. Green flag, green flag. Flat out, see if I can take Renna coming into turn one. Ooh, Carpenter as well. I think Carpenter is this yellow car in front of me. Right towards the back of the grid. I don't know how he did in 2003. There we go. Car on your right Pass him instead of hit him this time. You see the car, the driver too, actually reaches down to change the gear. And these cars did have an actual sequential shifter in 2003, 2004, I believe up until 2008. So they would lift their hands off the wheel to shift gears. But stuck in behind Dario Franchitti here, who's super far back for him. 
Caught the inside though. Car on your right side, clear. Oh, and pass a few of them coming into turn three. Wash up in front of them. Way to the Take wall. Oh no. Your rear right suspension and your oil system is in bad shape. We can fix that damage, but we need you to pit now. Your front wing. So we'll try to do something a little bit easier. Maybe do Texas since I want to show off how ridiculous this track is. All right. So on the back straightaway of Texas, this was the good Texas, or supposed to be, but as you can see, coming into turn three, I don't know what happened to the banking, uh, especially because some of the other tracks are so good, but clearly the uh, specialists were taking the day off for this one. It's a bit of a roller coaster in spots, but we'll come out of turn four, so if I can get up the gears without spinning the car out again. Come across the line, everybody checks up through the little dog leg. And then into turn one, we should be able to just go flat out around here, even though it's a tighter track. But the banking is equal through turns one, two, and three, and four. You are four They're much closer to equal than it is these days, so it's just as fast on both ends. Come underneath Frank Heaty there. I think the AI starts in the same order without qualifying every time, which is kind of interesting. Come underneath Vitor Mira there. All right, make a couple passes. See if we can actually get through all 10 laps. I've found in the garage the most important settings to at least pick up enough speed to catch these cars is the wings. And I suspected it would be a little more simplistic than having to fully adjust the car, but interesting that you have to do any of it to be competitive. All right, see if I can get underneath Foyt here. Ooh, squeeze me on the back straight away. Go side by side into turns three and four. Try to run them a little high. Hopefully they don't just disregard you. I had to scrub off a little more speed though. All right, that's great, but I didn't pass anybody. There we go. <laughs> Almost did the same thing I did at Michigan there. Wash up into him, just teeter on the apron the whole time back down into fifth gear all right so maybe we got to do the high side to pass i'm not sure oh still side by side with him come into turns three and four see if i can work the high side maybe you got to really try not to scrub off speed which is hard to do with the limited steering angle that's the halfway that was your all right already halfway and we've only passed like two cars here we go underneath Foyt. Car outside. Still there. Still there. Still there. Rocket still off the there. second turn. He's still right there on the outside. Can I run him a little high into three? Car on your right side. I did outside. not predict still having there. an epic outside. battle with AJ outside. Foyt the fourth. Still there. Still there. Still there. Outside. Still oh there. gosh. Outside. Side by side through the whole still dog there. leg and everything. Clear. There we go. Oh, finally. You've taken 21st place. 21st. Almost like a win. Car on your right side. Block him. Car Keep inside. him behind me. You are clear. He's down at a fifth gear for the corners. I think he need to be shifting up to sixth for the straightaways. When we get in the draft. Car on your right no, side. No, Foyt's coming back Still on there. me. Outside, outside. Still there. You are. There we go. Clear. Get in front of him. All right, just a few laps to go. I can see if I can hold off Foyt at least. Ooh, car in front spinning out. Oh, get around the high side of him. Car's behind somehow. Avoid him. No. Your front right. Uh, and your oil system. Your front left suspension. Looks like you're. Oh. So I missed Chiafoni spinning and then totally took the wrong line through the dog leg and it uh, bit me bad. But as you can see, this is a pretty difficult uh, game or sim overall. Uh, I have to blame a little bit of it on the controls, uh, but also like I got to practice more, honestly, and maybe get better setups uh, to do a bit better at this. All right, not that I think the result's gonna be any better, but wanna show off a shorter track as well. And what better than the classic Phoenix International Raceway pre all the crazy reconfiguration? All right, so here we come down the back straightaway looking at Rattlesnake Hill in all its glory. Looks like I remember Phoenix, flat, not a lot of banking. Blue walls with the little sunsets on them. 
Go try to come through turns three, four, and not spin out the car here. Come to the green flag. Green flag. Losing out on everybody again. Get down to fourth for turn one. I think we'll just teeter between fourth and fifth for this full race. Got a little extra space here in the back straightaway, but not too bad overall. Oh, a little bit of understeer through the corner. Some weight jacker to that. All the guides recommend pretty much maxing out the weight jacker at every track. Which would not be too accurate. Alright, catching up to Tony Renna here. Ooh, just give him a little tap. Let him know I'm there. I love how big the front wing is from the cockpit <laughs> on this compared to the super speedways. If you crank too much wheel into the car, it actually seems to slow it down. I'll keep it on the throttle and everything, and if I've got it maxed out with turning, the car itself almost sounds like it's off throttle. It's an interesting, I don't know if it's there to help you or what it is, but it feels weird. All right, come underneath, Rena. But gosh, we're battling for last place. Things are not going well. So far. That's the halfway point. That was your best lap so far. You are five tenths. So I've set my fastest lap and I'm still last. So clearly I gotta work on the setup a bit more. But this goes to show I'm not driving great or anything, but you actually do need to work on the cars to be competitive in this, which is very unlike other games from the time. I'm thinking NASCAR 2004, 2005 that everybody loves so much. I mean, if you're playing quick race mode in those, you're racing right up front, and I can see how this would put people off. Not being able to just compete and race for wins with the default setup. Let's see if I can actually complete a race, though. Well, the cars in front have checked up a little bit. I got two laps to go, but I've caught up to them a little bit. We gotta try not to get last place. White flag is out. This is the last lap. Oh, we got a good run coming out of the last corner underneath Renna. You've taken 25th place. Car on your right side. Outside, you are clear. All right, last lap, though. No, coming into the corner, hit the wall a little bit. Car's sliding. Oh. And your cooling system, your front right suspension, and your electronics. And your rear wing is in bad shape. So saying I need a little bit of work on the racing is an understatement, but luckily there's a mode just for that, the master class. And this is so cool, uh, especially now looking back at it, because Dan Weldon narrates the whole thing. So if we jump in, uh, there's a few different lessons here, but like I said in the intro, this is more like a challenge type uh, mode for the game, but different lessons, I guess, to teach you how to race better, which I clearly need. So we'll try to do the basic car control one, and I'll just, I'll play out the the whole intro so that you can see it. Hi, I'm Dan Weldon, Bombardier Rookie of the Year 2003. Welcome to the Masterclass. This is where you're going to learn how to really drive an IndyCar Series car. We're also going to look at other aspects of IndyCar Series racing, such as pit strategy and awareness and passing. The aim is to give you an edge over your competitors. Let's start with the basics. This is where you'll learn to do it for real, so it's time to turn off the driving assists and get used to working the manual systems such as the gears, the fuel mixture switch and the weight jack. You may find that this will make your car more difficult to handle at first, but persevere, it's a key to the fastest lap times. Every race begins with a rolling start, as this is the safest way to get everyone running. You have to maintain formation during the warm-up laps. This formation is the qualification order, and it's against the rules to pass until you've reached the start-finish line. This race is about to start. Once the pace car peels off, it's up to the driver on pole to accelerate to race speed. Then everyone else can speed up, waiting for the green flag to fly. As soon as a pole driver crosses the start line, the race is on. Remember, 
At the start of the race you can't pass until you've reached the start line, so keep a close eye on the car in front or beside you, otherwise you'll be penalised. Using the manual gears is not as hard as you may think. While you've got six of them, you're only ever going to use three during racing as gears one to three are your restart gears for getting out of the pits during rolling starts and restarts. Let's look at that race start again. This is the currently selected gear. This driver is in second gear for the start and this is the rev limiter. When these lights hit the center red zone, it's time to change gear. Don't keep it in the red for too long or you'll blow your engine. Depending on the track and your car setup, you'll be running in fifth gear for most of the race. You can slip it back into fourth gear if you approach slower back markers to get the extra boost in acceleration for passing. Sixth gear is for drafting, which we're going to cover in the next lesson. Finally, to be a better driver you need to master your steering. The cars are highly sensitive and the slightest jerk of the wheel can dramatically alter your track position. You need to keep it smooth. Try not to weave across the track or you're likely to hit the wall or smash into another car. Aim to keep your car on the racing line, also known as a groove, as much as possible. If you can do this, you'll get better lap times as you're less likely to need to slow down. An easy way to spot the groove is to look for where the tyre rubber has been laid down in the past. As a race progresses, deposits of tyre rubber will build up in the groove and you'll find more grip leading to faster lap times. During a race, we hardly ever use the brakes during cornering. It's just not needed. If you find yourself drifting towards a wall like this guy, all you need to do is lift off the throttle and your car will come around <laughs> Did as your he speed to reduces. himself just say that? But obviously you want to keep your speed up at all times, otherwise it will cost you places. So remember, keep it in the groove. Alright, enough talk. Time to get you on the track. This is a basic test intended to get you used to a car with no assists and manual gears. First up we're going to simulate a race start so you know what to do when you're on pole. This will also give you a chance to work up through the gears. Once you're on your way I want you to complete one full lap. To keep it even more simple, we're going to lose these guys. Follow the pace car until the driver peels off from the track and then put your foot down and don't forget to change gear. Do one full lap and return to the start line within the time limit. One last thing before you go. As we want this to be as authentic as possible, your car will be prone to full damage. You've got to learn to control it so if you come off the track or crash your car, you fail the test. All right, that's pretty cool. It's nice to hear Dan Weldon uh, after so long and, and a neat way to have one of the most popular drivers in the sport at this time, the Indy 500 winner, uh, be a part of the game. So we have to do this test and uh, he kind of underplays the whole under the time allowed bit. But to get a bronze medal, we have to hit 222 mile an hour average lap. Uh, gold is a 226. And let me tell you, it's going to be hard to even get the bronze, but we'll try to do it. All right. Three, two, one. Go. So we'll come out of the fourth corner here at Indy. Figure this is a cool way to show off Indy as well. Come past the pace car, just get the foot down, see if we can do a lap here. All the way up to fifth gear. Oh, I was a little late on it there. You actually have to be really good at this though, and you can see the time we have to beat there of 40.5. Not too bad through the first corner though, a little bit of a lift. I don't know if this is going to be flat out. All right, on the back stretch now, fifth gear. All the way up to 230 miles an hour. I don't think we'll get to sixth gear. Come down to turns three, though. A little bit of a weird entry, but for this game, it's going well so far. Maybe I can actually get this on the first try. We'll see. 
come out of turn four. All right, come to the line. 38, 39, 40, no. A 41. Oh, God. All right, so I failed the master class. Um, I think you actually need to work on a setup maybe to do this, but we'll try. I think I can actually adjust the weight jacker and things, so we'll see if I can get a little bit faster than that. All right, put the weight jacker all the way to the back, just flat out here, see if I can get the car just nice and easy and a good line. Oh, and I think the fuel mixture is actually down, so see if I can raise that, if that speeds the car up at all. Up to fifth gear. Final lap. Ooh, down into the grass. That's going to slow us down a little bit. Oh, the car is just bouncing through the corners. I think that's the weight jacker, actually. I'll have to see this any quicker, but I feel like I've scrubbed off a lot of speed in the first couple corners. Two thirty-one mid corner, though. That's not too bad. Turn coming out of turn four. Didn't hit the wall. Rocket towards the line. Oh yes! Oh, I actually did it. Well done. You made it around. Bronze medal. All right. He doesn't seem the most enthused, but I only got a bronze. I'll try one more time, see if I can get better than that. All right. This time we'll go all the way up to the fuel level immediately. You can't adjust it before you go green, actually. So you have to do it once you get the green flag up to fifth gear. See if I can just keep my foot flat and get a good line through all the corners. Car's bouncing so weirdly again. Oh, 230 or 223 through turn one's not too bad. Oh, no, no, no. All right, that didn't work out too well. It's so hard to keep control of the car, but the weight jacker really does make a difference. Right on at that time, though. Let off the throttle just a little bit, but the car is still bunny hopping into the corner through the short shoot, all kinds of wrong lines. No, once again. All right, I don't know what that was all about. A bad line, maybe. All right, fifth gear, though, across the line. See, my straight line speed's down, I think, without the weight jacker all the way to the back, but it's not quick enough to just set it like you can do on modern indie cars. You have to click through every option. Oh, bouncing a little bit through turn two, so slow. But 233 on the back straightaway, so maybe it's not that slow. We'll come to the line, though. Is this any faster? Ah, uh, no, that's not gonna be good enough. All right, I'm gonna try one more time with all the crazy settings to see if I can get some good corners put together. Try not to bounce the car too much through the corners. We're spin out and crash. There we go, through turn one quite nicely that time. Oh, it's through turn two as well. All right, we're on it this time. This one's for all the money, all the way up to 234, 5, 6 on the back straightaway. Come into turn 3. I didn't lift at all, but you could hear the car kind of lift just from scrubbing the speed. All right, come out of turn 4. Kind of shallow line through 3 and 4, but I think this is my best run yet. Come to the line. 39, 39.8. Ooh, was that gold? Excellent time. Great use of the racing line. You've got the gold. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. So I'm not the worst in the world at this after a little bit of practice. All right. So overall, the challenges are kind of a lot of fun or the master class, as they call it. Uh, I'm not sure it actually teaches you that much other than you got to really cheat the system to go fast. But a gold medal does feel good. And uh, I'm sure they don't get any easier from here. So IndyCar Series 2005, the most recent 
IndyCar game, dedicated IndyCar game. Uh, for 2005 even, or 2004 when this came out, it's pretty rough. Um, but if you did like IndyCar, like I did, uh, it was a fun one that got you quite a bit of mileage. There's a lot of depth here, and it's kind of a weird Simcade thing where the driving itself isn't exactly realistic, but you've got a ton of realistic things you can do to the car to add uh, setup options and try to perfect racing and everything. So uh, you could definitely learn to be very good at this and have some good full races. The full season mode is a lot of fun as well with all the qualifying and points championship and all the little bits they add with introductions to all the circuits and throw in Dan Weldon's master class there. Um, and it's a good amount of fun. Nothing like the EA Sports NASCAR Thunder and probably what everybody wanted or even to this day would have been awesome to have and uh, i can only hope that there's another indycar game on the horizon someday something that's just a, all the tracks all the cars uh points championship that type of thing and not just one of the cars and a couple of the tracks but we can cross our fingers and hope and until then play oldies like this so hope you enjoyed kind of a weird game not so great at it uh, but a fun one to look back to so thank you for watching i'll see you all again next time